there was to love about that fourth quarter the other day, nothing, nothing was better than the rhythm of Ben Roethlisberger going 9 of 10 for 129 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Najee Harris up the gut. Benny Snell up the gut. Lots of receivers involved. Oh, and one other thing, very, very little deliberation. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates right where you found this. I will be flying up to Minneapolis later today to cover Steelers versus Vikings tomorrow night at 8.20 p.m. inside U.S. Bank Stadium, which, by the way, is a structure that has to be experienced to be believed. If you think there's only one Jerry's world out there, you'd be mistaken. This place just... just it's hard to describe. I don't know that the caliber of the football will rival the setting, if only because both teams will be coming in on three days rest and because neither team has exactly distinguished itself offensively over the course of the season. However, we see in Pittsburgh, in spurts, that this offense does good stuff. It tends to come later in games. It tends to come after a lot of hard, seemingly unnecessary lessons are learned along the way, such as if you try to run into a nine-man box with this offensive line, you're not even going to make it to the line of scrimmage. It takes, I don't know, 12 or 14 of those for that to penetrate. Once it does, and once the game starts looking like it's in jeopardy, we have seen now several times that the Steelers have gone to a more hurry-up pace. This isn't to be confused with a no huddle, by the way, and this definitely isn't to be confused with Ben Roethlisberger hijacking the play calls from Matt Canada. That's a big popular narrative because we always want to believe in the player and not believe in the coaches, but it's also not accurate. I asked Ben Roethlisberger after the game Sunday at Heinz Field about the one touchdown, especially the, the beautiful misdirection that broke Deontay Johnson wide open. Because it looked to me like Ben was motioning up to the coach's box, presumably toward Canada, after that play worked as well as he did. And Ben confirmed it. Yeah, he said, I, I told him, nice job, Matt, you know, through the radio. That's, that's how this works. Canada is still in the quarterback's ear up until the time limit. You know how that stuff works with the radios. And... Ben just moves more quickly. And when he moves more quickly, the defense can't move at all. They can't get off the field. They can't make the substitutions that they want or they're going to risk being offside or uh, attempting an illegal substitution. And that's They won't do that. So the defense becomes, in Ben's own words the other day, more vanilla. And Ben... This is way more important than anything I just said. Becomes the best Ben. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying. Whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. Ben does see this offense progressing. He does see things getting better, and he sounds hopeful that it can continue into Minneapolis. I mean, obviously we'd love to, to have the blowout game and not have to worry about it, but I definitely think you can learn something from the game last week. You know, we're 
you have to drive down the field or or Chicago a few weeks ago where we've got to go down to win the game. There's something to be said and, and you know, character that can be built, heart that can be built uh, from those games. And so I definitely think that there um, is some things to be taken from tight games because a lot of times when you get to the postseason or, you know, as you're starting to get down to the end of the regular season, which is almost considered postseason, um, games are usually tight. Um, and so uh, if you can look back on, oh, remember this game or remember this moment or remember we needed a drive here or a play here, if you've already experienced them, sometimes that can benefit you moving forward. We'll see how it goes. I, If I had to make some sort of grand prediction about how the offense will unfold against Minnesota, I, I would say that it's way more likely than not that we're just going to see more of the same. We're going to see two quarters, maybe even three quarters, of a lot of the same – sideways stuff, trying to run just to show that we can run, even though we can't really run behind this line. And later on, there will be a pass, hit on a slant, maybe to Deontay, maybe to Chase Claypool, maybe over the middle to Pat Fryermuth. And then you'll see the defense start to back off, and then you'll see the hurry-up mode, and everyone starts showing more energy and bends really into it. And everyone's following his lead. And the pacing itself starts to intimidate the other team. And I'm saying all this stuff, and you're picturing it in your head, and you're wondering why they can't do that in the first quarter, like the first series of the game. I have heard it spoken by the Steelers themselves, including Ben, that uh, it's a tough way to play. Uh, the pacing part of it can become tiring in and of itself. And then the other component to that is if you are in command of the game, uh, in particular on the scoreboard, the last thing you want to do is hurry, hurry, hurry. And if you don't make it and you got to punt or turn the ball over, or whatever, you're, you know, you're giving up time of possession. And I get all that. But I don't prioritize, and I wouldn't, if I were the Steelers coaches, prioritize that over that feeling of confidence. It's confidence that makes it uh, all the way up to Ben. It makes it through to the other skilled players on the team, Deontay and Najee Harrison. You know who else it affects? Do not laugh at this. You know who else it affects? The offensive line. The only times, think about it, that we have seen that O-line look like they're moving downhill is in these hurry-up settings. It wasn't just Benny Snell blowing through those holes in the fourth quarter. He was getting holes. Why? Because the O-line also had everything simplified for them. All of a sudden, it wasn't we got to do this, got to do that. Here's this fancy thing. Here's this pull. Here's this trap. It was just boom. Nothing to it. And the other guys were starting to get a little tired, and it started to show. Do that in the first quarter. Those points count all the same, right? When we come back, just one question. from Adam who asks, PK, do you feel Chase Claypool has regressed since his rookie year? I feel he's become a one-trick pony and not always a good route runner. Maybe it's just me. I just thought he used his body better last season. Adam, I'm going to agree with you that Claypool has regressed. I'm going to agree with you that he is not always a good route runner. I am going to disagree with you about the one-trick pony because to be a one-trick pony, you got to have one trick. And What's his trick? What's he got? Yeah. I mean, he'll hit, as I mentioned in the opening segment, 
on one of those slants and he'll get those big strides going and he's a threat to find the end zone as we saw early in his rookie year. I have a feeling, Adam, that where Claypool's career is right now, that we're all unduly influenced by the number of touchdowns that he scored in the first few games of the 2020 season. And I'm just talking about touchdowns. It was a TD a game through, mm, off the top of my head here, through nine or ten games there. And a lot of them were impressive. A lot of them were big-time home run plays. And even the ones, in fairness, that were uh, short yardage, you'll remember the end around, the sweeps, he'd find his way back there. Scoring touchdowns is a skill. Always has been and always will be. And he showed to be pretty good at it. The part that disappoints me to this day about Adam is that I have stuck in my head, maybe permanently, the one catch he made in his NFL debut game in East Rutherford, New Jersey, against the Giants. You know which one I'm going to say. It was down the right sideline. And the ball was put in a place where it looked like it really couldn't be caught. In fact, one of those amazing next-gen analytical services said that the ball had something like a 43% chance of being caught for where it was thrown, what the coverage was, body angle, and all that other stuff. And he fought, and I mean fought, through his defender to come down with that football. And I thought to myself, whoa, did not see combat catch on this guy's Notre Dame resume. What was all that? Well, turns out there's a reason it wasn't on his resume. Because although we saw it show up again from time to time, we definitely didn't see it consistently. And towards season's end, we didn't see it at all. We haven't seen it much this season either. Ben will put up a 50-50 a ball, an old school, you know, Johnny Unitas heave. Go up and get it. And you'll see not only that he won't be able to go get it, but as you point out in your question, he won't have the proper body control, and he'll sometimes just, like, fall down. And you're wondering, what the heck? <laughs> what, what is that? And what happened to the, the, the dude in New Jersey, you know? That, to me, is the disappointment. That's the separator. If you're going to be someone who makes catches downfield, and if you're Claypool's size and athleticism and everything else, you got no excuse not to be making those, you have to be able to turn the 50-50 balls into at least a 60-40 or even a 70-30. You have to be that guy. You're going to have size over almost anyone who's covering you. You need to have the stronger arms. You need to have the stronger will. You need to separate yourself within this receiving core as being able to contribute something that nobody else can. Deontay, God love him, he, he's not going to grow. And we saw the one thing Deontay did wrong in the game Sunday came on a deep ball. Only his second drop of the season, and kind of a tough drop, but it was a drop. That route should be getting run by Claypool. Ah, in parentheses, or James Washington, except that he's just falling right off the face of the earth at this point. And he didn't help himself by not presenting a better target for Ben on a throw into the end zone himself on Sunday. End parentheses. This just isn't turning out to be a, a great wide receiver. And I think a lot of us rightly had our hopes up after that early portion. And 
look, I, I'm not going to be the one who always, always, always brings up the narrative stuff and the off the field stuff or whatever, but he hasn't exactly distinguished himself there either. And I'll just leave that right where it is. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. Let's do another one of these tomorrow from. <laughs>